this lesson is on the earliest signs and symptoms of appendicitis. So these are going to be certain findings that occur before we actually have a full blown onset of appendicitis. Before we talk about those earliest signs and symptoms, let's discuss what appendicitis is and how it ends up occurring. So appendicitis is an inflammation of the appendix. So if we were to look at this image here, here is the small intestines and here's the large intestine. And the first part of the large intestine is where the appendix is going to be located. The appendix actually juts off the first part of the large intestine and this is what's going to become inflamed and cause issues in appendicitis. So how do individuals get appendicitis? So it's going to be caused by obstruction of the opening of the appendix. So again, it's that little structure that juts off the first part of the large intestine. So there is a lumen that connects, so a little connection between the two. So what happens is there's going to be an obstruction or a blockage that ends up leading to an inflamed and swollen appendix. So what are some of the things that can cause obstruction? One of them is going to be what we call lymphoid hyperplasia. So some of the immune tissue in and around this location can become swollen either due to some gastrointestinal condition like Crohn's disease, for instance, or some other gastrointestinal issue, or due to a gastrointestinal infection, this can lead to appendicitis in those cases. And we're going to see this especially infections that lead to lymphoid hyperplasia. We're going to see this more commonly occurring in teenagers and young adults. And then another important cause of obstruction of the opening of the appendix is what we call an appendicolith, which is actually a stone that can block the appendiceal lumen or the appendiceal opening. And this is more common in elderly patients. So when there's a blockage of that opening to the appendix, bacteria will then proliferate within the blocked appendix, causing inflammation. So who's more likely to get appendicitis? Well, we actually see it slightly more common in males compared to females. Males outnumber females 1.4 to 1.5 to 1. And in Western countries, we can see a higher prevalence of appendicitis. And it's generally up to 7% of the general population at some point in their life can get appendicitis. And in other countries, in Asia and Africa, due to differences in diet, they can have lower prevalences. And the symptoms are often going to be acute and start within 24 hours. So once that appendix becomes blocked, it starts to become inflamed, we're going to start to see symptoms occur quite quickly. But there's going to be certain subtle findings that can occur that can help us to detect it quite early. So this is what we're going to talk about in this lesson. So one of the first findings we can see in appendicitis is abdominal pain. Now, in fact, there's actually one symptom that may occur prior to abdominal pain. We'll discuss that next, but I want to discuss abdominal pain first because this is often a classic finding of appendicitis. So abdominal pain in appendicitis is going to be interesting in that initially when a patient starts to get some inflammation of the appendix, they're going to start off with a sensation of a vague and generalized what we call periumbilical pain. So periumbilical means it's around the belly button. So it's going to be a pain kind of in this area, but the patient can't quite pinpoint where the pain is. So it's sort of generalized pain if you ask the patient where the pain is located, they're not quite able to tell you. They'll just say it's in around this area. Now, the duration of this pain is generally going to be anywhere from four to six hours. And then as the appendix becomes more and more inflamed, as the condition progresses, the pain is going to become more focal and localized to what we call the right lower quadrant. So the pain is going to start off in and around the belly button at first, then it's going to start slowly shifting down and to the right. So what is the right lower quadrant? Well, we actually use that term to describe the location on the abdomen. So we use the belly button or the embolicus as the midpoint, and we separate the abdomen into four quadrants. And because we're looking on the patient here, this is actually the patient's right side. So this is the right lower quadrant. This is where the appendix is located. And in fact, where that pain is going to become localized is at a particular point that we call McBurney's point. So clinicians will often find this point by finding what we call the anterior superior iliac spine, which is the prominent top portion of the hip bone that you can actually feel, you can palpate it. And then the clinician will draw an imaginary line from that point they feel to the umbilicus, and it'll be one third of the way from that anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus. So it'll be in and around this area. This is how they can determine the location of the appendix. Again, that's McBurney's point. So overall, again, we're going to get this vague generalized pain that occurs in and around the belly button. It's going to start to shift down and to the right, and it's going to focalize. It's going to be more of a pinpoint 
pain in McBurney's point. So at first, the patient's not going to be able to quite describe where the pain is located. They won't be able to have a pinpoint spot where the pain is, but eventually over time, and again, it's going to occur over hours of time, they will start to be able to literally point at where the pain is. And again, that's big Bernie's point. So I mentioned the abdominal pain first because this is actually one of the most important discriminating features of appendicitis. So if you see this particular pattern of pain, this increases our suspicion that this is appendicitis. So the focal pain in the right lower quadrant is not going to be exactly an early finding of appendicitis, but this particular vague pain in and around the umbilicus or the belly button is. This is actually one of the very first symptoms that we can see in patients with appendicitis. And another very early symptom of appendicitis, and perhaps the earliest finding of appendicitis, is anorexia. So anorexia is going to be the medical term we use for loss of appetite. So this is going to occur very early on in appendicitis, and it can occur even before that periembolical vague pain starts. So this can be the first symptom that can occur, and then not too long after we can start having that periembolical central abdominal pain that we talked about before. So a lot of times patients will just start off with perhaps it's dinner time, and they will just feel like, you know what, I don't feel like eating right now. And that can be the first finding in appendicitis. Now, this often will co-occur with the pain. So because they occur quite close to each other, it can appear as though they kind of start together. So a patient may describe as that abdominal pain, and then they just don't have an appetite. So they can occur with each other, and that pain can actually exacerbate their loss of appetite. So that pain may actually lead to anorexia or lead to a worsening of anorexia. But what may also be occurring is that it may be related to increased cytokine levels. So cytokines are immune system chemicals. So when the appendix is inflamed, inflammation is going to lead to an immune response that leads to increased levels of immune system cytokines or immune system chemicals. And some of these include tumor necrosis factor alpha or TNF alpha, interleukin or IL-1, and IL-6. Now these are going to travel through the bloodstream. They're going to enter into a part of the brain, deep inside the brain, called the hypothalamus. And these particular cytokines, these immune system chemicals, can act on the hypothalamus to cause certain functions to occur. And one of those actions is actually suppression of appetite centers. So this can be the reason why even before some of that vague pain starts, patients can start to have a suppression of their appetite. So this is an important and perhaps the earliest finding of appendicitis. And this is going to be a very important finding because it affects three out of four patients. So it's a very common finding. Another important finding that may occur early on in appendicitis is fever. So the fever is going to be generally a mild fever at first, especially, unless there's a perforation that may occur later that can lead to a more severe fever. But if it's early on in appendicitis, there may be a mild fever, what we would call low-grade fever. So it can be less than 38.3 degrees Celsius or less than 101 Fahrenheit. This is going to be due to inflammation of the appendix. So again, because of that inflammation, it's going to lead to those cytokines, those increased cytokines we talked about before, TNF-alpha, IL-1, IL-6. As mentioned before, it's going to act on the hypothalamus. And instead of it suppressing appetite centers, which it will also do, it can also increase our temperature set point. So it'll make us feel that we are actually colder than we are at the moment. So it will try to cause our temperature to rise. So this is why we can get a bit of a fever in some patients, not all, but in some patients with early appendicitis. And then some other important findings of early appendicitis is malaise. So malaise can occur very early on as well. So along with that periembolical pain, that bit of loss of appetite, there can be a generalized feeling of being unwell. There can also be bowel habit changes in some patients. So some patients can get constipation, which is a decreased frequency and increased consistency of stool, or diarrhea, which is an increased frequency and decreased consistency of stool. So most commonly, it's going to be constipation as opposed to diarrhea, but we could see diarrhea in some cases. So the reason that constipation can occur, for instance, and why it is likely to be more common than diarrhea is that at the beginning, when the appendix starts to get inflamed, and this can lead to a slowing of what we call peristaltic movements of the large intestine. The large intestine does muscular contractions to move contents through it, but because there's a bit of inflammation in the large intestine or 
in and around the large intestine, then it will actually slow those peristaltic or muscular contractions. So we end up getting a slowing of bowel movements. So this can be an another early finding. And another possible early finding is nausea. And the nausea can go along with the loss of appetite as well. So that can also be an early finding of appendicitis. And then later on, vomiting may occur in later stages of appendicitis. Please check out my other lessons on appendicitis if you want more information on other signs and symptoms, complications, and how it's diagnosed and treated. Please consider joining as a member for members-only content. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.